Mm -hmm. Hi, everybody. My name is Mina Jane. I'm one of the Cary Library programming librarians, I guess. Um, and I'm really happy to have you here. I'm so excited to have um, Shalini here for our, this, this really great program on fun and fancy appetizers. She's been practicing a lot, so she's going to be great. Um, I want to thank our Cary Library Foundation for supporting all of our um, adult programs. We could not do this without them. So if you donate to, donate to them, thank you. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to introduce Shalini just really quickly. She has been cooking and teaching for years and years and years. I want to say like at least 20 um, in Lexington, maybe even. Um, but she can talk a little bit more about herself and her cooking history. She cooks it, um, she teaches in many different places. It's definitely her passion. But for me, um, she was introduced to me from somebody in our cookbook club, Tina. And um, Shalini's never done a Zoom program before, as many of us have not. And I have to say that I have been so impressed with her um, just wanting to do this, learning how to do it, um, you know, being courageous and adventurous with it. So I have to say that if her cooking is as good as her, her attitude, <laughs> you're in for a great treat. So I'm gonna hand it over to Shalini and she can tell you more about herself and we can get started on fun and fancy appetizers. Okay. Hi everybody. Thank you, Mina, for that lovely introduction. So I'm Shalini, as um, Mina told you, and I'm so excited to be here. And as she said, <laughs> I've been practicing a lot. Zoom made me a little nervous. Like most of you, I've been living a Zoomed life. I, I, it's crazy. I've done everything on Zoom. I've attended weddings, funerals, graduations, book groups, exercise classes. Um, so I'm familiar with it, but this is the first time I've actually taught on Zoom. So it's a strange new world, right? It's funny talking to a computer. Uh, so that's what I was practicing for. So if you got a chance to read my bio, as Mina said, I've been teaching at many different places for many years. I actually used to teach business at um, Northeastern and BU 35 years ago. I'm dating myself, that's okay. Uh, and even though I love that, I started teaching cooking about maybe five or six years ago. Uh, this is my true passion, teaching people how to make nutritious and delicious food. Um, I'm also the cooking teacher at Hayden Rec Center right here in town. Uh, I teach six classes a week from all ages, from ages three until middle school. I'm also a head chef at Let's Eat Together, which is a volunteer program right here in Lexington every Wednesday. Um, I, I've taught at, all over Boston at famous places too, like Christopher Kimball's Milk Street Kitchen. That was really exciting. Um, at the gorgeous Boston Public Market. And then I teach cooking classes in my own house to a company called Cozy Meal. I love my classes, love, love, love them. Almost in person, right, with people. So as I said, this is a new experience. Okay, so as you know, today we're gonna make fun and fancy appetizers. This is one of my most popular classes. And if you read the little information, as I wrote, it's a great time to treat yourself, right? Um, these go really, really well with a glass of wine or three, who's counting, right? And uh, if you make these appetizers, so easy, so delicious, your friends and family will love you. Well, I'm sure they love you already. They'll love you more probably, right? But they're so delicious, so easy. Okay, so let me explain. We're gonna make the first one, caponata. Super healthy. You probably know it's a Sicilian spread, right? Sweet and sour, classic Sicilian flavors, and um, full of vibrant veggies. Beautiful veggies, all kinds of things going in. I'll show you all the ingredients. That takes the longest. We're gonna start with that the first, right? We wanna plan our time accordingly. The second one is uh, not so healthy. It's more decadent. It's a caramelized shallots and goat cheese tart. It's as good as it sounds. It's seven on a plate. So delicious, so easy. People go crazy at parties for that. I guess the healthy thing is the shallots in there, the caramelized shallots. Okay, that's the second one. And the third one, uh, deviled eggs, but not just deviled eggs. These are deviled eggs kicked up a notch. Deviled eggs with candied bacon. Oh my God, so good. Um, and those are, yeah, those are healthy. So we have a super healthy one, a not so healthy, and a pretty healthy. So three things. So let's get started. We're going to start with a caponata. Let me show you. Can you see? Uh, Mina, tell me when the camera's not right, Mina. Okay, so we have all these veggies here. We've got gorgeous eggplant, uh, onions, bell peppers. Let me turn my stove on, hold on. My stove takes forever to heat up. Okay, and then caponata, it's got, oh my God, all these great things. Red wine vinegar, 
we're gonna put capers, oregano, pine nuts, uh, raisins, a little sugar, uh, and then garlic, of course, and beautiful fresh herbs, parsley and basil. This is from my garden. I wish I could say I grew it, but no, I didn't. It's still in pots. I grow tomatoes and cucumbers, but haven't tried basil. Okay, so while the stove is heating up, I'm going to look at these gorgeous. When my kids were young, I tell them nature's candy. Look how gorgeous. I'm going to cut these bell peppers, right? I cut these ahead of time. It's just a small dice, the eggplant and the onion. And my stove is heating up. Let me show you the pan. Everybody has a pan they can't live without. This is mine. I literally cannot live without this. I use it five times a day. I call it my workhorse. My daughter thought I was referring to her once. I said, no, sweetie, you're not the workhorse. This is the workhorse, right? This is my workhorse. We'll be making the caponata in that, in the big one. And this is my baby workhorse. In this one, we're going to be making the topping, the caramel shallots that go on top of the goat cheese tart, right? So we're working on two appetizers now. Okay, so we're going to heat that up. Let me cut these. Um, I should also add, please let me know if, I, if I'm talking too fast. Um, years ago when I taught at BU, 35 years ago, I didn't know, but Thursday night was Greek night at BU, meaning all the kids are drunk on Thursday night, right? Greek night. I got these freshman kids eight o'clock in the morning on a Friday morning. They stumbled in, still hungover from the night before. And I had to not only educate them, but wake them up and entertain them, right? So um, we used to give you know, evaluations at the end of the semester. I didn't want to wait that long. I was an eager beaver. So I gave him a survey in the middle of the semester. And one kid wrote, this is what he wrote. He said, I've learned one thing in this class. Never get drunk on Thursday night. Friday morning, my teacher talks so fast, my head spins. That's all he said. Looking back now, it was very funny, but at the time I was 27 years old and totally crushed. So I, well, I think your, um, your speed is just perfect. So go, keep going. Thank you, thank you. So I learned to speak really slowly in class at BU, but I come home and uh, you know, 20 miles a minute uh, in class. So let me know when I'm talking too fast. Okay, so let me just cut these. And let me see if, my, if the workhorse has heated up. Hold on. So I'm going to put in some olive oil, a little bit of olive oil. And, okay, we'll do this in stages. We're going to cook the onions first, because they take the longest, right? About four or five minutes. Then we'll add the eggplant for two or three minutes. And then we're going to add our bell peppers for a few minutes. It sounds complicated, but it's not. And you'll get the recipes with very clear instructions. And then just because certain veggies, you know, cook faster than others. And then we're going to add all this other gorgeous stuff. So um, I should say, I have a very, very Italian brother-in-law, Gianluca Lazzaro. He's very, very Roman. They live in Chicago. And I should say it like him, caponata, caponata. And he says, shy, he's very good. So he approved of my caponata, <laughs> so I'm happy. So let me get this done. So caponata, the history is really interesting. The name apparently is from Sicily, right? Capon means tavern. So they have these taverns in Sicily with fishermen come after a long, tiring day and they go and eat at these taverns, these capons. That's how caponata, the name, came about. And in Sicily, they should just, you know, chop them with octopus and squid, sea, seaside island, obviously. And there's another theory that says capon is a very fancy fish and the poor fishermen couldn't afford the fancy fish. So they replaced it with eggplant, right, as a substitute for the fish which is one of the main components of caponata, eggplant. Um, this dish can be served cold, warm, room temperature. It's great as a side dish. It is amazing, served as an appetizer on crusty toasted bread, called crostini. Um, so yummy with a glass of wine. Okay, so I think that's you know, See, it takes a long time for my uh, stove. So I'm going to add the onions to the fry pan. Okay. I love that sizzle, it's music to my ears. Okay, so I've got my um, bell peppers chopped up. Look how gorgeous, look at those colors, beautiful. Okay, so garlic. Now, 
along the way, I also like to give a couple health tips. So health tip number one is, you know, garlic is so good for you, right? So if you want to increase the benefits, apparently you let it sit out for at least 10 minutes. Longer is better, you know, longer is okay too, but at least 10 minutes. And it apparently increases all the amazing antioxidants and all those wonderful things. So why not, right? Do you mean out from the refrigerator or out like from the bunch? Room temperature. Okay. Yeah, at room temperature. Pretty it increases everything. Okay. Garlic press. <laughs> I cook a lot. All my friends give me garlic presses. Never use them. I like to do what Ina Garden does, you know, smash it, right? Gets all your aggression out. There you go. Love that. Smash it really hard. There we go. She always says the less tools in the kitchen, the better. I totally agree. I also love what she says that hands are the best tool in the kitchen as long as they're super clean. And obviously, especially now with COVID, I'm sure all our hands are ultra super clean. You know, we've all been washing them 10 times a day, right? So yeah, hands really are the best tools. Okay, so let's peel this garlic and mince it. I hear the onion sizzling. I love that sound. Okay. So, okay, the garlic's done. Uh, I'm going to uh, eggplants. You mean the light's okay, right? I can still see without my light. Light's fine. Okay. Okay, and there we go. So, I have everything ready. The French call it mise en place. I don't know if I'm saying that right. It simply means having, having everything in place. And this works really well for some cuisines. It doesn't work for, well for Indian cuisine because Indian cuisine, you cook the onions for half an hour, that's that time you could be chopping things then, right? It doesn't make sense to have everything ready ahead of time. Uh, today I did. The French I think they came up with it. You know, many cultures have this, having everything in place. And I'm so excited that I found a new use for this. This is uh, a thing for poaching eggs. I've never ever used it for poultry eggs, but today I thought, wow, I can put my ingredients in here. So I'm so excited. I have my raisins, my capers, my sugar, everything in this little handy ah, container, which I've used for the first time today. Okay. Good catch. Yes, that would have been good. I, I pre-measured the, the sugar, the capers. Okay, so now I'm going to, hold on. Oh yeah, we put tomatoes in there too, in the capa blanca. There's so many ingredients that go in there. That's what makes it so vibrant and delicious and healthy. Oh, and the good thing about capa nata, perfect for a party because it actually tastes better, like most stews, right? It tastes better two days later. A day later is good, two days later is even better because uh, all the flavors marry. And it's, it freezes beautifully with no loss of flavor or texture. So that's really exciting, you know, you can make it ahead of time. I love it when you can do that, especially for a party. Okay, so we're going to put the eggplant in, right? That's the second veggie that goes into my workforce. I can't wait a couple of minutes. Okay, now I'm gonna heat up this, uh, the mini workhorse, the baby workhorse, and in here I'm going to put the shallots, which goes on top of the goat cheese tart. Okay, so the goat cheese tart, right? So right now we have the onions cooking for the caponata, right? On the goat cheese tart, I'm going to caramelize the shallots. You can use red onion, but shallots are best because they're so mild and sweet. How do you caramelize shallots? Oh, so delicious. We cooked over 20 minutes, first with honey. And then the balsamic vinegar. So that's a topping for the goat cheese tart. We also put goat cheese on top, right? So two toppings. So we bake the puff pastry, the shell of the tart, fully bake it, take it out, put the toppings on, put it back in the oven for the cheese to melt, which takes two or three minutes. That's it. So simple, so elegant, so delicious. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. So now I'm putting the eggplant in. So, so onions have been cooking for a few minutes. Okay, and I know you can't see, but I'm gonna lift the fry pan a couple times to show you what it looks like. Okay, so we have this, this, garlic, let me get rid of this. 
and here, so I chopped some of the veggies ahead of time simply because um, to save some time. As me and I were talking, this is an ambitious menu. We're making three things, right, in less than an hour. Um, when I teach this class, it's a two and a half hour to three hour class and we make six appetizers. I always overdo it, you know, I'm giving people more bang for their buck, so to speak. Um, but I stress myself out. When I have a dinner party, instead of four items, I make 10 and then I get stressed out. So I always overdo it. So let's see. But, you know, I think we can do this. Um, so I cut these ahead of time. Can you see these are shallots? I just cut them the long way. These are eight shallots. They go on one tart. Right? I'm going to start caramelizing them soon once the baby who, of course, heats up. So this is my tea, my spice tea. Chai. Starbucks calls it chai tea, which is kind of silly because chai means tea. Uh, it's a bit early for wine, <laughs> for a glass of wine, even though they say it's probably five o'clock somewhere in the world, right? I love that saying. That reminds me of a plaque I saw in a friend's house. Um, it was on the wall. I loved it. It said, I love cooking with wine. I'll even put some in the food. Sometimes I put some in the food. I love that. But anyway. Okay, so. I'm going to put the shallots into my baby fry pan. And this is, okay, like I said, the topping for the goat cheese tart. Um, we're going to put some oil. Okay, so for like, with any cooking, right, for the caponata and for the caramel shallots as well, if you want to add more butter or oil, you certainly can. Uh, especially if it's for a party, you can be indulgent. But if you don't want to add more oil, you can always add water. Um, I'm probably going to do that, like one or two tablespoons at a time, and you can certainly absorb the water. So that's always a good option to add water instead of more oil or butter. Okay. There we go. So, put shallots. Let me get the butter. Hold on. Okay, so to caramelize the shallots, some of a combination of butter and oil seems to work really well. Okay, we'll put some butter in there, a little bit of butter. Um, I'm gonna stir my cup now. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about butter a little bit. As we all know now, you know, we used to use the artificial margarine and things like that. As we know now, butter is good for us, especially, um, grass-fed butter, right? Uh, it's actually good. Like Julie Child said, our beloved Julie Child, um, I remember when she said, everything is better with butter. Julie Child, as you probably know, she lived in Cambridge, shop at Cardulo's, the gourmet shop in Harvard Square. Um, God, I wish I'd met her. And then I find out that a friend of mine who lives in Harvard Square was good friends with Julia. Uh, and then as you know, she moved away, she passed away, but she always says everything's better with butter, in moderation, of course, right? you know, everything in moderation. I have a friend who doesn't cook at all, totally clueless, and she asked me, um, how can the butter be grass-fed? I said, no, sweet, it's not the butter. The cows are grass-fed, but as you can tell, she's totally clueless. She doesn't know anything about it. Okay, so now we're going to add our bell peppers to the caponata, right? The eggplant is kind of softened now. I'm going to add the bell peppers. Okay, it's just cooking at a medium heat. We'll give that a couple minutes. Um, meanwhile, okay, so I'm going to, to the second fry pan, the baby the four fry pan. I'm going to add the shallots. And this is a topping, right, for the goat cheese tart. So we're going to add the shallots. I'm also going to add. Uh, I'm going to add three tablespoons of honey. Okay, so I guess another health tip. Honey, as we know, it's good for us, but if you're going to eat honey, why not get all the amazing benefits, the antioxidants? Um, so organic and raw honey is really, really good for you. Um, it's funny, I bought this at Market Basket. And I love to read the back. So it has all these biblical sayings on the back. And I thought, I wonder where this is made. 
So I look at the back, it's made in McKinney, Texas. I was there last December. Who knew my cousin lives in McKinney, Texas? So what a coincidence that the honey I buy, it's a little tiny town in Texas, really quite charming actually. I was surprised. Um, I hope there are no Texans watching. So um, anyway, raw organic honey is really, really good for you. So why not use that? I use this for my tea every morning, Trader Joe's organic raw honey. Again, why not? If you're going to sweeten your tea or coffee, why not get all the benefits, you know, of raw honey? <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you a little, a trick, so to speak. So you know when, you, when you're baking and you put honey in a cup or spoon, it often sticks to the spoon, right? All the honey. So I'm going to show you a little trick. Wait, let me just um, first check my cup and after. Okay, so I want to show you. It's basically just sauteing the veggies. This is how it looks, right? This is gorgeous and colorful. I'm just sauteing the veggies. Okay, so that's looking good. Okay, my little trick. You probably know this already, and you're gonna say, "Oh, what's the big deal?" But if you don't know it, it's quite exciting. So what you do is you spray the spoon, right? And all the honey will drip right out. None gets stuck to the spoon. Now watch it not work. So I do this with the kids that hate it. And they all get so excited. And one little girl took it to another level. She shrieked. Oh, Miss S. They call me Miss S. Oh, Miss S. I have to tell my mommy. She got so excited. So let's try it. Voila, it all came out. The spray worked. Not a single bit stuck to the spoon. So that's, that's a nice little trick. We're putting three tablespoons. Okay, and let that get nice and sticky, right? For about 10 minutes, and then we're gonna add three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar um, to the shallots. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a few more things to the caponata. So remember, we have two things going. In the big fry pan, we have all the filling, uh, we have the taconata stuff. In the small fry pan, I'm paralyzing my shallots for the goat cheese tart. Okay, so what we're gonna add to the taconata now is tomatoes, garlic, and raisins. That's a classic ingredient in taconata. Now, many people have told me they don't like raisins, but you won't even taste them. They get all plump and juicy because the veggies release their juices and the raisins absorb those juices. So they get really plump and delicious and they cook for a long, long time. You can't even tell they're in there. So we're gonna add tomatoes, garlic, and the raisins to the caponata. And garlic. Let me turn my oven on. Okay. Okay, here we go. I turn my oven on at 400. That's to bake the puff pastry, the shell for the tart. Okay. We've got garlic. We've got that. Okay, so now. Um, and then the vinegar, the capers, and the sugar are going later into the cocktail towards the end with the herbs. With uh, Deborah, Deborah would like to know what kind of, uh, what brand of balsamic vinegar do you use? Oh, that's a good question. Hold on, let me show you. I've got it right here. Balsamic vinegar can be super, super expensive, right? Especially with age, you know, it's made from Modena, Italy. If it's aged a long time, but I find this works beautifully. Trader Joe's, can you see? Just barely. Okay, it's uh, Trader Joe's Balsamic Vinegar of Modena. It's a small bottle, four bucks at Trader Joe's. Great, thank you. Yeah, it works so beautifully. My sister who grew up in Italy, who's married to Gianluca Lazzaro, she's very picky about her products and she likes this one. Okay, so um, let me check the shallots. So I want to talk about tomatoes for a second. I told you I have all these health tips, right? 
um, you know how they all say we shouldn't eat canned goods, right? Because of the BPA leaching into the can. But it's so hard not to open a can of chickpeas or black beans, so convenient. But the one canned good you should never have are tomatoes, um, unless the can says BPA free, which is hard to find. The reason being is that tomatoes are so acidic that all the BPA chemicals leach into the can. So really best to avoid canned tomatoes. I love this. Can you see this, Bomi? Can everybody see this? One ninety nine at Market Basket. Mm -hmm. um, it's made in Italy. Well, I would say grown in Italy, but it says made in Italy. You gotta love those Italians. Made in Italy, no sugar, no salt, just no BPA, love it. So for summer, you can obviously use fresh tomatoes for your caponata. I didn't have good fresh tomatoes, even though I have 12 tomato plants in my garden. No tomatoes as yet, obviously it's too early. Um, so for class purposes, I wanted to show you this, the pomi. Great product, love it, love it, love it. So that's where I put in the caponata, uh, about 14 ounces. But again, it's all in the recipe. Okay, let me give it a stir. Okay, so I'm gonna cover the caponata now. It should cook for 20 minutes, 30 is even better. The longer it cooks, the better, right? I'm gonna add a little water and then just cover it and let it do it, let it, let it do its thing. Okay, let me add some water to it, maybe like a quarter cup of water, because I don't wanna add more oil. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna cover it and let it hang out. Okay, here are the shallots. Let me show you. They're they're just cooking in the honey, right? Getting caramelized, nice and gooey and soft. Okay, so while those two things are cooking, right, we're going to now roll out the puff pastry for the, for the puff pastry tart, for the caramelized goat cheese tart. So my, my counter is totally sanitized, I scrubbed it three times. I'm gonna put some flour on here. I got my rolling pin. Okay. So you can use any flour, but this is King Arthur flour. I think it's the best, I love it. King Arthur's flour, uh, made right in Vermont. Okay, so we're gonna flour the board. I mean the counter so it doesn't stick. Uh, now this is a puff pastry sheet, right? I'm gonna roll it out to about an inch and a half more on each side, on all four sides to make it a little bigger. Um, Do you not use those little, um of pastries that come in this shell shape? Um, you can use those too, but this, for the tart, this just looks, it makes a nice presentation, you know, this whole thing. So I'm gonna roll it over. You can certainly use those, yeah, any puff pastry. Now, I wanna talk about puff pastry. You can certainly make your own. There are many classes on how to make your own puff, puff pastry, but many things are better homemade, but why make this? It's very time consuming, takes forever. Um, as the name says, it's layers and layers of buttery deliciousness, puff pastry, it puffs up. Um, Pepper's Farm makes a great one. Trader Joe's has it too. It's sort of like filo dough, right? If you've ever used filo dough, that paper thin dough that you make baklava with, or spanakopita, I don't think anybody makes it at home anymore. Uh, or maybe somewhere in a small village up in the mountains of Iran or Turkey, I'm sure there's a little old lady rolling out filo dough, but most people buy it. Most people don't make it at home. Right, it's because you can buy it. And Athens is a really good brand for Philodo. I think that's probably the main brand, Athens. Made in Ohio. Okay, so I'm rolling this out. Oh, like I said, about an inch and a half to two inches on each side, so it's bigger, a square. It comes in a square. Okay. And then meanwhile, you always have to be aware of the kitchen, right? I'm going to um, just stir my caponata and check my shallots. It might be time to add the balsamic vinegar to the shallot, caramelized shallots. So we're gonna add three tablespoons. So the idea is to get it nice and syrupy, nice and sticky and green syrupy, the caramelized shallots. Okay, three tablespoons of balsamic. Stir the 
That's looking good. Looking good, and let's keep rolling this out. Okay, now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make it look pretty like a box, and I'll show you how. Like, let me move the camera a little bit. But like the Japanese say, we eat with our eyes, so things have to not just taste good, but look pretty. So I'm gonna cut off a half inch around each edge. Right? Do you, use a do you use a particular brand of puff pastry? Yes, Beverage Farm is um, a very well-known brand, and Trader, Joe, Trader Joe's has it too. I've never used the Trader Joe's one, but at Pepperidge Farm, every supermarket has it in the freezer. It has to be defrosted at room temp for 40 minutes before. All the instructions are on the package. Okay, so I'm cutting off, I'm gonna do this on all four sides. I'm cutting off one strip, about a half inch, and then putting it back on here to make a border. Can everybody see that? So it ends up looking like a little box, right? It makes up really pretty, like a little box. Okay, I'm gonna do that on all four sides. Okay. There we go. So cut it and then put it back. It sounds complicated, but it isn't, I promise. And as I said, ask any question. I, I really believe there's no stupid question. I've been teaching most of my life, from Beauty to Northeastern to tutoring to cooking, and no question is ever stupid. All questions are valid. Love questions. Okay, so I'm just going to trim up the edge to make it look, to make a perfect square, and then cut off the border. Okay, so hold on. Let me just do this side. So you don't have to do this, but it just looks really pretty. It looks like a box. Okay. And let me get an egg wash. I have an egg in the fridge. Okay, let's see right here. Ah, come on. Okay, I'll be right back. Let me get an egg. Okay. Okay, so we use an egg wash. Uh, it's basically egg with a little spoon of water. And let me get my, my brush. I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna show you the shallots. And maybe another minute or so. We've got a nice uh, caramelized and brown sticky. Okay, you know, I'm actually, um, I want a little more caramelized. I'm actually, it takes about 20 minutes. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of water to this. Okay. Just about a spoon. Okay, so now we're going to uh, on a sheet of parchment paper. You can use foil, but parchment paper works really well. I'm gonna, hmm, there we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you how to put the border on. But now I'm going to just put egg wash on the edges and then stick the strips on. So that acts like a glue. The egg wash acts like a glue. So we have this, right? And then we're going to put the strips on all four sides to make a border. Okay, we're going to do that. Uh, let me get this egg wash. A little water here. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to mix that up. So... <sighs> We use egg wash in many baked goods, right? The reason is, okay, firstly, I'm gonna use it as a glue, just put the strip on. And then we're gonna actually... Would sorry. you mind moving your um, egg carton? Yes. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so these are done, the shallots. We're just we're gonna let them cool for a bit, hang out with everything. Okay, and um, let me just finish putting these strips on. Okay, so we have a full box. And if you're doing it for a party, you can make sure, you know, it's a perfect square. So I use the egg wash as a glue. Now I'm gonna put egg wash onto the strips, on top of the strips. The reason is, like I said, I use it for so many baked goods. The protein makes it brown, right? And the fat in the egg makes it shiny. So that's the reason for the egg wash. Uh, a little bit of science and cooking. I love telling my kids I hate in this. 
they get so excited about everything. It's amazing how, how gourmet these kids are in Lexington. Um, they, they love chicken tikka masala and Korean beef, and they've, they've had so many amazing experiences. I got ranch dressing once. We make everything from scratch, but one time I bought ranch dressing, thinking it's the most popular dressing in America. They all said, oh, Miss S, that's gross, that's disgusting. These are sixth graders. I said, I thought you liked ranch. They say no. We all made their own dressing from balsamic vinegar and olive oil. I was so impressed. So was my boss. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now this goes in the oven. We get a fork. Okay, so we're going to prick it. The reason being, we don't want it to puff up. The name is puff pastry, but it puffs up a lot. So we're just going to try and stop some of the puffing. So prick it about, I don't know, 10 or 12 times, right, to stop it. And it goes into a 400 degree oven. Okay, not quite there as yet. It's take, it'll take a couple minutes to go to 400. So we got on the side. My cat mouth is looking good, it's still cooking away, doing its beautiful vegetable deliciousness. Let me get rid of some stuff here. Okay, we don't need the flour, we don't need the rolling pin. Okay, let's move this. Let me have a sip of my tea, my chai tea. And um, let's see. So I'm gonna put the puff pastry shell in the oven in a few minutes. The shallots are done, the topping. The coconut is cooking away, and now we're gonna work on our deviled eggs. Deviled eggs kicked up a notch. I have everything ready here. Okay, so you've got the eggs, of course. I boiled them last night, just regular boiled eggs. We've got uh, this. There's lots of stuff that went here into the filling. Deviled eggs can be made a million different ways, right? This is my way. Uh, yes. Okay. Would you mind putting your computer back up, your camera back up a little bit? Perfect. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for guiding me. As I said, this is a strange new world for me. Teach you a class on Zoom. <laughs> you model, as they say, right? But it's interesting. Yeah, definitely an interesting experience talking to a computer. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze some lemon. Lemon, how do you get more lemon juice out of your lemon? Sometimes it doesn't seem very lemony. Just give it a nice massage. It loves a little massage, right? Massage it around or put it in the microwave for 10 seconds. You'd be amazed how much more lemon juice comes out of your lemon. Okay, so I'm gonna squeeze the lemon. Okay, so now we're going to... I'm just gonna cut these eggs in half and take out the, oh, that's my oven. Let me put the tart shell in. The oven's now 400. Okay, so um, this is very strange. As much as I cook, I've never used a timer in the kitchen. I know it sounds weird ever, but then my daughter said, Alexa has a timer. I didn't even know that. Um, so let me tell Alexa to put the timer on. Let's see if she works. She's like my fourth kid. I have three kids. She's like my fourth one. Doesn't listen sometimes. Um, so I'm going to see. Alexa, put the timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay. I have to show you my Alexa. Can you see she's got eyes? She had hair and a, a mouth that fell off. I have to redecorate her. But she's a member of our family. We take her to the cave, we take her everywhere. This is <laughs> um, Do you have a method or a secret for cooking hard boiled eggs so that they're easy to peel? Yes, you know what's so interesting? We go on the internet, there are so many, um, uh, you can Google thousands of ways how to boil an egg. So I just put them in cold water, the eggs. Um, eggs go into cold water, I put them on the stove, medium heat, let it come to a boil. Once it boils, once it starts bubbling furiously, I let it cook for about seven or eight minutes, right? It boils seven or eight minutes, and then I turn the fire off and let them sit in the hot water for about 20 minutes. And, uh, and then when they're warm, it's so easy to peel. They're easy to peal when they're warm than when they're cold. 
Okay, so I'm going to put the yolks in this bowl and we're going to add lots of yummy things to it. But meanwhile, let me just check my um, the carbonata. We're going to add a tiny bit more water, like I said, you can take it. You know, I'm going to try and turn the lights on and tell me if it works because it's kind of dark in here. Sure, go ahead. But tell me if that makes it difficult, then I'll turn them back off. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. You sure? Yeah, it's better. It's more important that you be able to see. <laughs> oh, you know something? Actually, I can still see. It's okay. I'll turn no, it no, off. no, no. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> So let's get a fork here. So what do we put together? Next? Okay, so we're going to put, um, I have my spoon here. Ah, here we go. We're going to put uh, a tablespoon and a half of sour cream. You can certainly use Greek yogurt if you want. We're going to put um, a tablespoon of mayonnaise, uh, some mustard, which I had right here. Okay, let me get more mustard from the fridge. Um, we're gonna put, this is optional. I like it spicy, so you can put some sriracha. I think every household, well, just about every household in America has a jar of this in the fridge. Uh, you might know it's made in California, somewhere in California, and they were actually gonna shut the factory down because the local townspeople said the fumes made their eyes tear up and they couldn't, you know, could barely breathe. But luckily for us, I feel bad for the townspeople, but they didn't shut it. Okay, so I'm mixing this up. We're going to put um, some capers, uh, a tablespoon of, a few tablespoons of capers in the deviled eggs. How many uh, eggs did you start with? I started with three eggs. Three eggs. So we're making many, many more, but I started with three, and that makes six halves, right? Okay, so we've got that. I'm gonna get the mustard. I'm gonna put some of these herbs in there. Some chopped um, fresh flat leaf parsley. Okay, some parsley in there. Um, some green onions that I chopped up earlier. Let me get the mustard. Oh, hold on. Let me just get the mustard. Okay. How much sriracha did you put in there? Was it a half a teaspoon or less? Um, you know what, to be honest, I didn't measure. Uh, I usually don't measure when I cook, but for class purposes, I've been using tablespoons and all that. This, I just did two squirts. And this is totally optional. Most general eggs already have this. Uh, if you like it spicy, add more. If you like it less spicy, add less. I did two squirts. Now I just did a third one. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so basically, just like classic devil eggs, we're mashing it all up. Okay, so devil eggs have a really interesting history. I googled it. It said they started in, in they were served in ancient Rome, but I'm sure they go way back before that. I'm sure ancient Asian civilized civilizations ate them, and. Uh, Devil doesn't mean devil, it, it means zesty and spicy. But in some religious households, apparently, they can't say deviled. They have to say angel eggs, like the singer of Katy Perry. I read somewhere that in her house, she couldn't say devil eggs, she had to say angel eggs. Um, Fanny Farmer Cookbook, I think it's one of the oldest cookbooks in America, and where did it start? Boston, of course. They, I think in 1896, they suggested using mayonnaise as a filling. So that's when it became popular. Uh, it's a retro uh, appetizer, but still one of the most popular. I've noticed that every party is the first thing to go. People just love picking up a little deviled egg and popping it into their mouth. You know, it's a small bite, it's delicious, so popular. Okay, so here's the filling. I'm just mashing everything together, right? And what we're also going to add to it is some candied bacon that I actually made this morning. Um, I did do this one thing ahead of time because it was a very ambitious menu. As I said, there was a lot going on. I wanted to make sure we finish. So how did I make the candied bacon? I'll tell you exactly. Um, but first, first, 
Let me check our beautiful carbonata. I'm going to add now the capers to it, the sugar, and about three tablespoons of red wine vinegar. This is sort of the final touches to our carbonata, which has been stewing all this time. Papers. That's about three spoons of so three teaspoons of sugar. And I'll put it up and show it to you in a second. Um, we have the red wine vinegar. I'm going to add three tablespoons to it. Okay. Two, three. Okay. Let me show you. The veggies are getting really soft. And can you see that? Okay, there we go. The veggies and we cook it a couple more minutes and then we're gonna add some of these um to it to the capulata. That's the final touch. We're gonna finally add a fresh basil. Fresh parsley and pine nuts to the caponata. Very Mediterranean item. Again, this is um, optional. You don't have to. They're kind of pricey. You can leave them out. It'll still be delicious. Or you can add slivered almonds. That might work. Or you could add the pine nuts. Up to you. Totally optional. So these are the final three things for the caponata. The herbs, the fresh basil, parsley, and the pine nuts. And it'll be done. Carrie wants to know if you can use Japanese eggplant for it, or do you have to use the the other one. Oh yes, you can use Japanese, Japanese eggplant, absolutely. In fact, those are less bitter, right? Because they're thin and they are less bitter. If you use Italian eggplants, you don't want to get the huge ones because the bigger they get, the more bitter. If they have tons of seeds, the seeds of the bitter part, you might want to take some of the seeds out. Okay, so back to the bacon. Many chefs say everything's better with bacon, just like Julia said, everything's better with butter, right? So I used to make uh, bacon on the stove top, but it gets all splattery and curly. So I just discovered this. Some of you might do this. You make it in the oven. You just put it on a tray like this, on right a rim thing, and then make sure you put something underneath a tray because you don't want it splattering on your oven. And then you just lay it flat, and it comes out straight and beautiful. And then I put a mixture on top, um, and you'll get in the recipe. It's brown sugar, cayenne pepper, and cinnamon. And you put half the mixture on one side. Bake it for about ten minutes. My oven takes longer. Flip it over, put the rest of the mixture on the other side and bake it for another 10 to 15 minutes until crispy. And voila, it comes out nice and straight, not curly. Perfect for this recipe. So I'm gonna chop some of the bacon and put that in the filling as well. And we're gonna leave some for garnish, right? So some of the bacon gets chopped in, let me get rid of this. Okay, I'm gonna chop it and put it in. Now, Okay, I don't, want to trust Alexa. I don't want to trust Alexa that much. Let me check my uh, tart shell in the oven. <laughs> yep. It's getting nice and brown. So I'm just chopping up maybe, I have three uh, strips of bacon. I'm chopping up half and putting it in here. Okay. And just like Julia, I'm going to taste. I love tasting as I go along. In fact, sometimes I taste so much, I'm not hungry for dinner. But of course, you never want to double dip, obviously. Oh my God, that's so good. But it needs one final thing. I talked about lemon, right? It needs a teaspoon of lemon juice. Oh and again, you can customize it. Add more lemon, less lemon. That's the nice thing about cooking. You don't have to follow recipes. You can just taste it as you go along and add things. You can't take them out, you can add things. Yum. Okay. Now we're going to fill. Yes. Now you don't have to pipe them. Believe me, you can just spoon them into the shells and call it a day. They'll still be devoured. But if you want to make it look pretty, uh, you know, a piping bag. I got this at Bed Bath and Beyond. So I want to talk about the nozzle. It's a big nozzle, right? So remember, my filling has chopped up bacon and green onions. The nozzle is big enough that it'll come through. If your nozzle is small then you probably don't want to add the bacon to it unless you chop it really, really, really small. 
That way you can just use it as a garnish. It's up to you. And like I said, you don't even have to do this. Okay, let me get a clean spoon here. I'm gonna check my tapenata. Okay. Okay, before I fill my eggs, I'm just gonna add the herbs to the tapenata. Because I think it's done. I'm just gonna rough chop these herbs. Adds a bit of brightness and freshness and makes it all that more delicious and healthy. So parsley used to always be like a little garnish on a plate, but now we know it's got so, like all herbs, it's super healthy. But flat leaf is always better. It's got many more nutrients than the curry leaf. The flat leaf, I use it in a lot of cooking. Okay, so I'm just chopping my herbs, right? Putting them into the caponata. I'm gonna add a little bit of the, you can toast the five minutes ahead of time. I just throw them in. If you toast them in a fry pan, a dry skillet, make sure you wash them. They burn really, really easily. Okay, so just a handful of five minutes. And look how beautiful and vibrant and colorful that is. See, isn't that gorgeous? And so good for you. That's what I love, all those beautiful vegetables. Look at that. It is gorgeous. Isn't it colorful and gorgeous? Okay. So, yes, let's do, let me get a spoon and I'm going to fill our eggs. Okay, so, here we go. So, yeah, for a party, you probably, you know, you can double, triple. When I teach my class, I make the recipe three times over. So, we do, oh God, 18 eggs, or actually six times over. I can't do math. Okay, now I'm going to show you deviled eggs are so popular that there's, they even made a special uh, plate for it, serving plate. Let me show you. Okay, let me get the plates. All my serving batters. I love this plate. It's a special plate for the eggs. It has little indentations. So if you don't fill every indentation, you can certainly add um, little herbs or little paprika or something to make it look, to fill it up and make it look full. There we go. So there was one more herb that goes into the eggs, but I couldn't find it at the store. Fresh tarragon. You just chop up some fresh tarragon, and that really marries so well with the flavors of the of the deviled eggs. Okay, so I'm just gonna. Ah, it didn't come out so well. So once actually you make the filling, I forgot to tell you this. It'll be in the recipe. Once you make the filling, you want to put it in the fridge for about 20 minutes so it gets cold, so it's a little stiffer, and then it pipes better, like any icing, right, or any filling. Okay, so mine usually looks a lot better. Okay. Okay, you get the idea. We just fill them in. And then we're going to make it look really, really pretty with uh, the idea is to make it look pretty. So I have some green onions here. Right, I'm just going to. Let me do one. And then we're going to make the bacon. We're going to make the bacon stand up, stick of bacon, uh, just like this. Uh, maybe a sprig of paprika, I mean, sorry, of uh, parsley. So, you know, we can just get creative and decorate it, make it look pretty. <laughs> you... Oh, that's Alexa's timer, hold on. Now, that's the egg, let me check my tart shell. Yeah, just a couple of minutes. Alexa, stop, thank you for being. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is on the deviled eggs, I hate saying this, I'm gonna say it anyway, my secret weapon, smoked paprika. It's not spicy, it makes everything look so pretty, just a touch of red vibrancy. So I put some of that on the deviled egg. Okay, oh, my filling is really not cold at all, so it didn't pipe properly. So you make, you put the, um, the bacon standing up, a little green onion or chive, maybe a sprig of parsley, some paprika, just make it look really pretty, because as I said, we eat with our eyes as well. 
Okay, so that's the deviled eggs. We have our special plate. I'm gonna put that aside and get rid of some of the stuff here. One sec. This bacon is so yummy to munch on as well. It's a special treat. Oh my God, that, that um, the candy thing of it is so delicious. You know, cinnamon, the brown sugar, cayenne pepper. Okay, let me get rid of some stuff here. I'm going to okay, let me plate the, the caponata. So, you know, just like when you wrap a gift for somebody, the packaging makes a difference. It makes it, enhances it. So even when you're serving dishes, I love using beautiful dishes. This is one of my favorite plates, crate and barrel, love it. It's uh, made in Italy, gold rimmed. I'm gonna put the caprata in there. Because it just makes it look that much prettier. Okay, let me get all of that in there. Beautiful. Okay, and then we're going to put, um, Oh, I think I chopped all the, bar, uh, the basil. So you could always put a sprig of basil on top, a beautiful sprig of basil. Um, you could put some basil leaves, just make it look really pretty. So that's that. So what do you serve this with? Let me show you. So this is not crusty bread at the store. It's really good with toasted sliced crusty bread. Crusty bread goes best. Uh, Corsini. So, Usually before a party, you're gonna serve this with your own bread. Yes, you can, you're gonna make your own bread. I'm gonna put that in the recipe. This is not a bread baking class, but I'm so excited about baking. Some of you might have heard about the no need bread. Uh, that has gone viral on the internet with some Jim Lady New York Times. It is so delicious. What I have here actually is not the crusty bread. This is a regular sandwich bread I made the other day. And the costini goes well on this. I toasted it earlier. It goes well on that as well. Let me just taste it. Mmm, so good. And even better two days later. Okay, so the no need crusty bread, I bought the Dutch oven. I only use it for bread, that's it, for nothing else. You don't have to spend $400 on red cuisette, whatever they can say. This is large. I got this at Target, 60 bucks, and it's enameled. Many recipes won't give you some important details that you need to know. The enamel might crack if you heat it up empty, but I'm gonna put all that in my recipe. Um, that I said along with these veggies, right? Because I'm so excited about this no-need bread. You can do it, it's so easy. And I said your friends and family will love you when you serve this. They'll be so impressed. You know, they say, where do you buy this yummy artisanal bread? Oh, I made it. Oh, it's so cool. You gotta try it. So the Dutch oven, I'll send the recipe as I said. Okay, time to take the tart out of the oven. I think we might go a few minutes over me now, about five minutes over. Is that okay? Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, yeah, we're almost done. We've got our eggs done, we've got our beautiful caponata, and now I'm going to, we're going to top, let me show you the, hold on. Yeah, I'll show you this, right? Let me move the computer a little bit so you can see. Okay. And Actually, can you, can you move the caponata so that, yeah, perfect. Okay, so here is the um, tart shell. Can you see it's got a little rim around all the edges? Yeah. It looks like a little box. It just makes it look pretty. Okay, so now it did buff up, not so maybe I should have picked it more. Let me move the camera back. Okay, so now we're going to top it with the shallots. Those gorgeous shallots that we caramelized earlier. For some reason, when I teach this class, the males in the class, I get a lot of guys too, husbands, you know, sons, son and mother teams. The guys always like putting the shallots on top of the tart. I don't know why, <laughs> makes him so happy. And one guy said, look, I've got perfect coverage, meaning that he covered every inch of the tart. 
He was so excited. Every clap, I guess you had to be there. It was so funny. Okay, so coverage here. I'm gonna do perfect coverage because you want every bite to have some of that yummy caramel shallots. There we go. And then we have. Okay, I left that in the fridge because it's goat cheese. It would have gotten spoiled. Let me get the goat cheese. Okay, so we've got four ounces of goat cheese. Right, and we're just going to literally spread it in chunks over the tart. Again, even coverage. And this literally goes back in the oven for two minutes. Okay, so uh, we're going to put a little bit of parsley on top just for a little freshness and greenness. And my secret weapon, paprika, which I seem to have lost. Oh, here it is. Again. I don't know why I hate saying that secret weapon. So a little paprika on top for a little color. Gorgeous. Okay, so this goes back in the oven for a few minutes. Uh, you want to put four ounces of goat cheese. Okay. And it'll be done in about two minutes or so. Just enough time for the cheese to melt. Okay, let me get it. So that'll take about two minutes. So, um, I'm going to tell you a little story about capers. Wait, let me move the camera. So, I taught at many adult ed, ed places, uh, Cambridge Adult Ed. The brochure actually says, Shady needs a soda, culinary instructor slash obsessed foodie. I asked my boss, can I say that? She said, go ahead. And so, people say, how did you become an obsessed foodie? Well, I grew up in Nepal, um, English boarding school, and in the ninth grade, they said you can take cooking instead of science. You could drop science. I hated science. The teacher looked at me once and said, this is the most miserable child in the class. They weren't PC back then. Not that I liked cooking, I just hated science. And my dad was so unhappy. He came home and said, you know, you can learn cooking at home, but I really couldn't because we had a cook and she'd always kick me out of the kitchen. So he comes home one day, I'm covered in flour, I'm making cookies, peanut butter crisscross. And he said, go do your homework. And I remember saying, daddy, I am. He saw how happy I was, his anger melted away. I still didn't like cooking that much, but it was on a trip to Paris, a uh, warm spring night, and I ate a soup, I was 14, that was so ugly, but so delicious. I still remember the name, Mussels Brittany. It looked like the mussels had eyes. Looking back now, they were capers. I didn't know what capers were, but it looked like little eyes, but the soup was so delicious, I ate the whole thing with my eyes tightly shut. And that's when I said, wow, food can be so delicious. So that's when I became an obsessed foodie. <laughs> I can look back to when I was 14. Does anybody have any questions while we wait for the um, tart? The tart's going to be out in one minute. Yes, any questions? I love questions. Okay, so I'm going to bring the tart out now. I've got a nice platter for it. Okay. So you could stand to stay in one more minute. You can, you can, you know, gosh, everybody's oven is different, just so the cheese is melty. Nice and melty. There we go. So you want to let it to sit for five minutes before you cut it. And let me show you. Uh, can you please, let me move the camera, hold on. Okay. You see the beautiful chart? It's beautiful. Yeah, it's so good. People love it. It's that combination of creamy cheese with the shallots. Um, like I said, let it sit for five minutes. I actually have a pizza cutter that's really sharp and scary, but I use it to cut the start. Okay, well, that's it. As I said, it's too early for wine, but I'm definitely going to have some of these tonight in a lovely glass. So I hope you will make these um, dishes and treat yourself, especially now during these you know stressful times. Um, as you saw, they're really super easy, super simple healthy, some of them. And I'm so glad you spent, which is your morning with me, thank you so much. I have to thank Mina. I was telling her earlier, I'm so impressed with all the programming she's been doing, uh, from gardening to touch up to cooking. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Mina, and for you know, being such a great hostess. And uh, thank you. Um, well, so we do have a question. Um, uh, Carrie says, do you serve the caponata hot or cold or either? It can be room temperature, cold, hot. 
um, any way you want. And as I said, it can be a side dish for roast meats or a main entree, or I love to serve it on the toasted uh, crostini and your homemade bread that you're gonna try when I send the recipe and you're gonna say, wow, it's amazing. You, honestly, if you've, I'm sure many of you have made it. Everybody's baking these days. In fact, I was gonna do a baking class today, but there's no yeast, no flour. Well, that was two months ago. Now, of course, you get it. But, um, and if you haven't, you'll be so thrilled that this came out of your oven, this beautiful loaf. Um, so yeah, and to serve it on your own bread is amazing. Awesome. Yeah, no, just some thank yous and a wonderful variety. The show was wonderful. Um, so thank you, Shail Shailini. Let me say your name right. I said it wrong at the beginning. Is it Shailini? Well, it's funny because the Indian name is Shalini, but I'm from Nepal. We have to be a little different. So mine is Shailini, this next to I. Shailini. It okay, means good. Of the mountains because I was born in Kathmandu. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> I have a cousin named Shalini, so I just wanted to make sure I said it right. Yeah, um, so yeah. I would like to thank you, Shailini, for doing this, um, bringing us some amazing um, foods that we can make in our own homes and for being adventurous with us on um, being on Zoom and doing this. So thank you very much. Thank you everybody who came. I really appreciate you sticking with us for all of these wonderful programs. So have a wonderful day and happy cooking. Thank you so much, Mina. Thank you everybody for joining me. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shalini. You're welcome. Bye.